Are you awake? Uh, no, I'm absolutely fine. I'm just No, I know. I'm just fine. saying. I'm just saying, are you awake? Are you ready? Feeling vibrant today, are you? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right. Rock and roll. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Tech Tuesday. My name is Ben. I'm Timothy. This is Tim, our senior technician here at ACZFI, um, or whatever else I decide to call him today. Um probably going to be moving more into the R&D role. <laughs> I'll still be in charge of tech and this side of the table. Fair enough. But I'll probably be doing real heavy R&D stuff over the next <clears throat> couple years. We're not For gonna the like, people. We're not going to like, you know. For the people. We're not going to like like release any new products or anything though, right? We're just R&Ding for fun. Uh, there's, yeah. We'll, we'll we ne- we that. never release any new products or anything like that coming down the pipeline. No, but, um, yeah, we'll roll into that as it goes. We do this for the people, like you said, and we will jump right into things. Mm-hmm. Feeling good, feeling fresh, feeling <sighs> episode 27 of Text Tuesday. Ooh, God. That, that is not, that's not fresh. I hate to tell you. No, that was a fresh yawn. Coming at you. I stayed up late doing paperwork, man. Just trying to get things happening. (laughs) What's that? (laughs) Call 1-800-WHAT'S-HAPPENING. God, I love that video. (laughs) Question one. I'm struggle busing. Give me a second. Dude, don't don't struggle bus. We don't struggle bus here. Uh, At Mark Willis. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mark hyphen Willis. Mm. He's a hyphen. Uh, Thanks for taking my Hall Effect question. Ford TFIs use Hall Effect distributors. They do, but they're funny. Um, Fox bodies are sequential with one skinny tooth on a reluctor wheel, but the batch fire motors and trucks use a reluctor wheel with symmetrical teeth, I believe. Yeah, that's, that's accurate, I believe. A guy could use a cheap truck distributor with a standard reluctor, eliminating TFI module, and wire direct to the kill shot, and then use a factory TFI coil. I wouldn't use the factory TFI coil. They're a little different than ours. Ours has some extra chipsets inside that makes it a real smarty pants coil. <laughs> Easy way to get a cheap and dependable distributor for roller cam small block Fords. Awesome videos, you guys. Say less. Mm. So what I will try to do is uh, I need to find one of these truck distributors, and I will yeah. stab it in something, and I will play with it, and... If that turns into a thing like, hey, if you're going to do this, I'll make a tech document and say, remove this, wire it like this, treat it like that, and kapoof. Because, you know, some of those billet and roller cams, they don't play nice with a melanized gear. Mm. Fair enough. It's accurate. Though I do, like you said, touching on the TFI coil, we want to stay away from anything... Not. I would really just put ours on there because some right. of them are the same looking coil and kind of the same, but they're reverse right. polarity and they're a little mm-hmm. bit weird and different. Some have different resistance values. Right. Some have an in different internal dwell time than ours. We've very specifically designed ours to work with our circuit. Uh, I've seen other people use different uh, coils, right. but I've also seen some failure rates of EFI rated coils and... You know they'll work for a solid six months, and all of a sudden the inject uh, the coil driver goes out on ours, and mm. it's kind of hard to warranty that when you're putting not Ace's stuff on that driver and it fails. Question two, Brian Stillwell six seven two three. It's not really a question, but he's just saying I'd definitely be interested in a live Q and A on the software. Um, what I will say, Brian, is that um, well, I'm about to be out of town for two weeks <laughs> for. Uh, something like a wedding or something like that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but during that time, um, we will set up some different Tech Tuesday um, opportunities for you guys um, that are outside of the normal you know, question answering um, like we're doing right now that we'll get back to at the beginning of April. Um, but during that time, you can look for um, at the first week of April of a live stream of a Q&A with Tim. Um, just overlooking the basic tech advanced uh, tuning software um, questions. Yep. Um, it, you want to 
expound upon what that might look like for you? Well, my plan is I would just go live stream with a bit of screen sharing, mm -hmm. and I would just pull a tune from one of the vehicles here, and I'd just go through it and start talking about it, yep. and then answer some questions as I go. Yep. Sums it up. I yep. figured a nice 30-minute block or so of that, or an hour or whatever, or mm -hmm. whenever I get bored. Yeah. Um, or I answered enough questions, because, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of stuff, like, you're really opening yourself up to the public, right. and... It some shouldn't people, be insane. Some, a lot of folks are going to be responsible because they'll actually have a solid question. So we'll we'll schedule that out for um, when we get back, uh, when I get back, so that we can put that on Facebook. I will put announcements on YouTube and things like that um, that will allow you to go watch that um, Q and A. It shouldn't be longer than maybe it, it might be a two hour thing all said and uh, done answering questions and some stuff that Tim brings to the table outright. But look forward to that. Put that on your calendars for a live Q&A with Tim um, for the advanced tuning software um, or any other questions that you might have uh, to ask him on the spot. So, yep. It'll be it'll be a, a long enough session that I'll be able to consume consume two cups of coffee and at least a honey bun. Yep. Um, yeah, so. I like that. <laughs> yeah, probably not a honey bun. That stuff actually was. <laughs> you have an Angston mm -hmm. eight three one five. Mm -hmm. Can you make a video demonstrating how to use and set up launch control on a jackpot system? Waiting on my drive mm -hmm. shaft. Still, otherwise I'd figure it out myself. Mm, I can try to. I can try to squeeze that in. Uh, if I can, I need to go. We could probably, I mean, I think we probably should do some kind of launch control uh, tutorial. Maybe, is that a tech short kind of a deal, or is that going to be a more of a long-form video? It's a very involved process yeah. of explaining how to trigger the wire, how to set it up, and then okay. actually demonstrating how it works. Mm. I can probably try to do that on the Blazer, because that is a jackpot drive-by mm. wire trans control situation. Mm. But it's not a big deal to patch it in and put a little button in somewhere but yeah it'll be a whole thing question four jacob frida frida friday friday ha have a jackpot with trans control on a 5.3 in my jeep running a 4l60e with a 241 transfer case um and can't use the four low because it trips the trans control up with the extra gear reduction need support to add a four low with the trans controller yeah we're looking at that i'm actually doing um that i'm doing a jackpot conversion with trans control on my one ton just to research that a little bit heavier because it is a different i mean it's the same reluctor ring I, I believe but it's like a whole different ratio so we might have to add an extra speed sensor input for that but then again how do you indicate Mm -hmm. when you're in gear so when you're in low so that'll be a whole different thing to look at is it electronic do you have a vacuum switch is it vcm controlled there's a lot of parameters we really got to look into to make that work i made mine work in a tahoe because i used a factory vcm and did some trickery which who knows the epa probably hates at carrie underwood <laughs> no nah. official donald trump no God, that's, <laughs> that's funny um Let's see here. Mm, Action Vulture 5251, <clears throat> Florida State University. Uh, <laughs> For those of you that don't know, look at his name from the last video. It was too good. I, I like that. That one was the Florida State one, wasn't it? Yeah. Double burn. Um, <laughs> let's see. At Sunday Hand Wound, um, what is causing people's fuel pumps to run with the vehicle parked and not running? Mm. Seems like only to be an issue when the pump is controlled by the ECU when the wire, when it's wired to the not wired when it's wired to the ignition switch. Just a problem that keeps getting mentioned on Facebook owners group. Want to avoid it with my install. What's causing that? That's a question, right? What I've run into was if you've got bad voltage happening in your sister's system somewhere, um, it'll keep a certain amount of logic stuff on. Uh, if you've used your alternator as a trigger wire, for instance, that will cause just the right amount of voltage to either damage your ECU or keep it semi on mm. as it goes. If you've got a sensor shorted out, it could do that. There's a whole host of poor wiring choices a few few cats have made that 
you know, it's the best install in the world. It's perfect. It's by the book. And then they send you a picture and you just like, <laughs> oh, I don't want to say these words out loud to this guy and I need to be nice about it. But dang. Um, yeah, we get some of that. But normally when we see that kind of stuff, it's it's usually due to a poor wiring choice or some kind of weird setup or it was a voltage related issue that has messed with the uh, the firmware program in itself and it's actually corrupted it so you if you have that you can try to reflash the firmware go over your wiring to make sure there's no dirty voltage anywhere um, no transient voltage problems yep. no low voltage problems yeah reflash your firmware run your wizard again and see if that goes away I had one come in on a uh, an inspection that was down to injectors. And I just went to the handheld ECU upgrade, ran the wizard again, and that was fine. And then after talking to the customer, I realized the fact that he had a um, a very low voltage situation going on because he was still building the motor, had no coolant in it, had no alternator or nothing, and he was trying to make it run on like 9 or 10 volts, which is yep. barely right there at the edge of the threshold, but it's enough to Get electrically mess with some programming stuff if yep. you're not careful. Yep. Um, I think also when it comes to, um, the main thing that, that you said with wiring, a lot of, all of our harnesses are very well labeled. So I think a lot of times what people end up doing is just, if they have any kind of experience with, you know, electrical wiring on vehicles, um, if they've installed an EFI unit before, maybe you've used another company, it's very easy to go, oh, I know where that goes. I know where that goes. Don't be that guy. Similar, Please, not the for same. the love of God, <laughs> don't be that guy. Um, because that's where a lot of those bad voltage signals come from. Um, not not necessarily, um, you know, it, it's not necessarily because there's something with one of the relays on the system. Very rarely will it be the actual system itself. Um, but just, I think we said it in last week, at the end of last week's video, um, ask a question if you don't give us a send us an email give us a call if you don't know um, or are unsure about where something hooks up here we go question 4628 um, Caleb Hall 7613 says hi does the jack aces jackpot LS pro work with a 5.3 LM7 yeah it's what I run both my jackpots on One's got a turbo, one's got a big old fat cam. Oh, no, there's the one ton as well. The one ton's a 5.3 LM7 yeah. truck motor, straight up out of an O2 Tahoe. Um, Non-VVT, non-DOD, none of that jazz. Just an LM7 straight up 5.3 junkyard Tahoe motor. Roger that. It was bent in half enough, the tail light was nearly touching the headlight. Wow. It was real bad. How does that even happen? Like a hundred mile an hour hit a bridge. Mr. Angelo one one five. Yeah. Or is it Mr. Angel O one one five? I don't know. One, Aren't two. those Phytech injectors and map sensors? Wow. So here's the neat thing: our our injectors, our sensors, and all that jazz. Uh, just like Phytech, Edelbrock, Holly, and all that jazz. A lot of the stuff you can just go to your local auto parts store and purchase. That's where they all come from. Instead of us designing our own, um, we just go and um, find a good supplier for it that has a few good quality checks and like, hey, you know, that way our sensors are going to be good, and we just purchase those. The injectors probably are sourced from the same place i know we have different inspection criteria for in, our injectors we do our, our i think our injectors are different our um, map sensors are uh, most of our sensors are standard gm i'm also pretty sure that our injectors are actually after we purchase them they get they get uh pulsed and flowed before they get put into a throttle body i know i Correct. know we do like a very thorough weird air test like a volume leak down air test thing mm -hmm. i can't even remember what that's called but it's a really neat test and it's actually mm -hmm. more thorough than wet flow into things yeah so uh, we do all that stuff but yeah probably similar manufacturing um but i mean they're ev6 high impedance pico injectors mm -hmm. so and then lastly well I, I guess we're running out of time here so our last question today will be crystallized jazz that's awesome. <laughs> Six four seven seven. In theory, you could put bigger injectors in it, right? 
all I see Ret- right now referring is jazz to the kill theory. Shot. For you music nerds that love math. You can put bigger injectors in the kill shot. Um, I would not do that on your own. There's caveats to that. Um, I would give us a call um, or send us an email, like uh, we've said before, um, and see if I know for a tech fee we've done things like locking out distributors and things like that in the past. I would rather, and you would rather, our tech department um, do those um larger injectors as also explaining um, how to deal with, with said bigger injectors in the system. Um, that way you don't void your warranty um, and you have a better success chance of just bolting it right on there and moving right along. Facts. And we've locked them out at 100 pounds an hour. So yep. physically you can put bigger injectors in there. You can put a set of 160s in right. there. But you have to go through my very special proprietary engineering level software and change the physical injector size. Right. That's the thing. Yep. And there's other stuff with that. But not a big deal. I mean, my Tahoe, it's it has smaller injectors in yep. it. So it's capped at 400 or 398 horsepower. Yep. And that's absolutely just fine. But, yeah, that's a whole thing. That's something we're going to, like, kind of open up into the avenue later when more people are running, like, E85. And they say, like, hey, I want a bigger injector to meet the same horsepower spec. So that's something we'll be diving into a little bit more in depth and allowing a little more freedom of that. But Mm -hmm. really to keep the warranty, that's something you want us to do here. That way we can leak, check it, run it, make sure it's just dynamite, and then probably leave you like a a half-and-half tune in there for some decent E85. I mean, you saw the test stand running yesterday on that. It took about two minutes to make that work. (laughs) I heard it more than I saw it. it I I was a little extra with the throttle yesterday, I admit. So we're at the end of it. We're at the end of it. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Tech Tuesday. If you liked it, please leave a like down below. If you have any comments or questions on EFI or ACES EFI, um, please feel free to leave a comment down below. We will get to it in April um, as there's a couple special Tech Tuesday episodes coming up for you um, here these next two weeks. Um, And, yeah, if you see Tech Tuesday media anywhere else on social media, feel free to show it some love. And, Tim... Like always, we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye now. Bye now.